One of the most unique features of Core is that we don't divide the, the book, the course, into microeconomics and macroeconomics. One reason for that is the broad group of people who've been involved in creating and writing the material. Some of them work more broadly in micro, some in macro, but the object of their interest is the economy. And that's been really the guiding force that has produced an integrated treatment of economic actors and their interactions and how that plays out in the aggregate economy. And what we find is that in the traditional method, then students would go into the micro course and it just uh, the way that it would be represented in maths is that they would have lowercase or Greek letters. Then they'd go into the macro course where they'd have uppercase letters and they'd think there's really not no connection between these two, uh, these two courses. But that's not helping them to build a way of using the tools of economics to understand the economy. And uh, we, we've also found that this works very well because when we build up uh, models of actors, so models of the labor market and the credit market, borrowers and lenders, employers and workers, th those models set in a context of imperfect information produce results that feed very naturally into the aggregate economy. It gives us credit constrained households, it gives us involuntary unemployment, so those features of the aggregate economy don't have to be brought in uh, with, with ad hoc assumptions about stickiness of this and that, which is the traditional way in, uh, in teaching about the aggregate economy. So it's a, it, 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 it saves time, if you like, but it, um, it also is, is much more satisfying for students in building up their understanding of how the economy works.